before the empty tomb and glorious resurrection, before the scandal of the cross, before Palm Sunday, the calling of disciples, and all the wonders of his ministry. Jesus traveled first to the wilderness, to the solitude and desolation of rock and sand, a king above kings experiencing the hunger and destitution of man. And when the time came for temptation, despite 40 days of deprivation, the Lion of Judah stood firm, confounding every attack with the power of his perfection. In this season of Lent, we share in his sacrifice. Not to experience anguish or to portray a counterfeit righteousness, but to draw closer to his holy presence. We withdraw from our distractions. We cast aside treasures and possessions, forsaking all that would separate us from his love. In this desert, he is the source of what sustains us, the joy in our surrender, the peace that surpasses all understanding. He is our hope in Lent. Just a way. 
Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God, he riseth from supper and laid aside his garments, and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poureth water into a basin, and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus saith to him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore said he, Ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet, and had taken his garments, and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example, that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. in the midst of Holy Week. It is Wednesday of Holy Week. In Christianity, Holy Wednesday, also called Spy Wednesday or Good Wednesday in Western Christianity, and Great and Holy Wednesday, also Holy and Great Wednesday in Eastern and Orth Oriental Orthodox churches, is this day, the Wednesday of Holy Week. 
And on this day, we find that Judas has agreed to betray Jesus in the biblical narrative. And so I'd like to share this scripture with you as I read from Matthew 26, verses 14 through 16. Listen for God's word. Judas agrees to betray Jesus. Then one of the twelve, the one called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and asked, what are you willing to give me if I deliver him over to you? And so they counted out for him 30 pieces of silver. From then on, Judas watched for an opportunity to hand him over. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here we are, this major event in the midst of Holy Week has occurred and Judas has made the decision to betray Jesus. It doesn't happen on Wednesday. As you know, it happens tomorrow, what would be Thursday. Although the betrayal isn't today, it uh, impedes our understanding of what is to come. Because tomorrow we would celebrate the Last Supper story, which uh, will find Jesus in the upper room with the disciples. And they'll take, he'll take bread and bless it and break it and give it to the disciples. And then they'll take the cup and bless it and break it and, and share it as we do when we celebrate the Last Supper or Holy Communion or the Eucharist, depending on the tradition you come from. So this is another event in the midst of Holy Week. My hope and my prayer is that you've had time or taken time to read the scriptures, to allow your minds to be filled with the possibilities that God has in store for you, that you've taken time to listen. Listen for the word of God. This, my friends is a message to you. Go forth in peace. Amen.